I actually think I found the most affordable mid-range zoom for Sony cameras. If you can't tell already, I'm in London today with this Tamron 2875 f2.8 G2. And when this lens first arrived, I didn't actually expect to enjoy it as much as I have. And there's a really important reason for that, which we'll discuss later. But in this video, I wanna share with you my experience of using this lens today whilst I'm here in London. We're gonna be discussing the image quality, the performance of the lens, and if you're in the market for a new mid-range zoom lens, whether I would recommend this one to you. Okay, so impressions so far. It's a really indiscreet lens. Can't really tell you carrying it around. I'm treating it very much like a 24 to 70. It's not really any different to a 24 to 70. And that's one of the things that surprised me most of all when it first arrived, the size of it. I have the original 24 to 70 G Master and that thing is big and bulky. Don't get me wrong, it's great, it's fantastic, it served me well. And perhaps in my head, I always think that f2.8 zoom lenses are always gonna be big and heavy and that just makes me wanna not use them as much. If you've watched some of my previous videos, you'll probably know that a 35 G Master is my favorite lens of all time. And that's because it's small and lightweight while still delivering a great image quality. And for me personally, the size and weight of a lens is really important to me, especially when it comes to traveling around a city, wanting to go shoot a wedding, pretty much whenever I have to carry a camera around with me all day long. However, when comparing the Tamron to the 35G Master, there isn't really much difference in size or weight. Even the filter thread is only 67 millimeters, whereas other f2.8 zooms are normally around 77 to 82 millimeters. So just the size alone made me really excited to use it. Unfortunately, one of the annoying things I've noticed on previous Tamron lenses that I've used is the same on this lens. I did have a little bit of concern about the weather today. On the lens, similar to the other Tamron lenses, it has a USB port, still no cover. And as much as it shouldn't really be a problem, you don't really want to get any rain or dust inside that USB port. It could cause a few problems later on down the line. And it actually wouldn't take that much to make something like a little rubber plug or a plastic plug which goes in that USB port just to prevent anything from happening. All the features that I use on the A7R5, such as the eye tracking, head tracking, body tracking, still works with the Tamron lens. However, there may be some issues when it comes to how many photos you could take per second. So far, it doesn't seem to be a problem with the A7R5. However, on other cameras, maybe like the A9 Mark III, you may encounter some issues. But it turns out I did actually encounter a few issues later on in the day. Let me explain. The 2875 comes with what Tamron calls their VXD system. It's pretty much a linear focusing system, very similar to what you get on the new Sony G Master lenses. Pair that with the A7R5, which in my opinion has the best autofocus system I've ever used, and you should be on to a winner. Unfortunately though, that didn't always seem to be the case when in photo mode. When I was taking just general photos around London, the autofocus was solid, on point every single time, unless it was just something I was doing wrong. Fast, snappy, can't fault it whatsoever. However, when I started trying the lens to see how well it would track a subject moving further away from the lens to closer to the lens, the results started to differ. Now these, what I'm gonna go through, aren't scientific tests. These are just in the real world, doing the best I can to answer your guys' questions. But with the camera's subject recognition set to car and then in a high burst mode, if a car was traveling towards me or a London bus at maybe, I don't know, what, 25, 30 miles an hour, it would miss normally one out of three photos. It wouldn't happen every single time, but sometimes it did. However, when I was taking photos, my mate Jmar walking towards the camera, moving around, strutting his stuff, it had no problems. I didn't have G Master 2470 with me, I especially didn't have the new version two, so I can't do a direct comparison. So take that piece of information about the autofocus however you wish. Now to the single most important thing for me, the image quality. There's no point in buying any lens if the image you don't get from the lens is good quality, right? All of the photos and the B-roll you've seen in this video has been taken using the Tamron 28 to 75. And none of the photos have had any profile correction or any chromatic aberration taken away from it. Hopefully this will give you a good idea of how the lens performs optically straight out of camera. From looking at the photos and the video that I've taken, you can definitely say that the lens is sharp. There is some distortion in the lens and you can definitely see that when you start adding correction profiles inside Lightroom. The colors it produces straight out of camera are lovely and this lens has allowed me to go and get the photos I've wanted for so long from London. But when you start looking a little bit closer at some of the photos, you will start to see a few issues. 
one of them being chromatic aberration. Take this photo for instance. This was shot at 28 millimeters at f4. The building, which is the main focal point, looks absolutely fine, but if you zoom into the top left corner and look at the branches, you can see the bluish purplish fringing around the edges. But for this photo in particular, you can clear that up with a little bit of correcting inside Lightroom. The lens also comes with a nine bladed iris, which really smooths out the background for the bokeh, and it gives you some really interesting stars when you stop down for some of your photos. But overall, the image quality minus the chromatic aberration is pretty good. However, when this lens first arrived, I didn't actually expect to enjoy it quite as much as I have. My first reaction when I took it out of the box was, this doesn't seem like quality. It doesn't feel quality. Don't get me wrong, the lens doesn't feel like it's incredibly poorly made. I guess it just doesn't come with the same aesthetic, the same features. I guess it just didn't feel like it was at the premium level that you would get from the Sony lenses. But something I had to remind myself is, this isn't at a premium price tag. I had a look this morning to see how much one of these lenses were on the internet, and here in the UK, you can pick up one of these brand new and have it delivered tomorrow for less than 800 pounds. The original Tamron 28-75 f2.8 was a cracking lens. And from what I can remember about the original lens, Tamron have gone away, improved it, came back, and selling this lens for not much more, if anything, it might even be the same price. So would I recommend one to you? If you don't mind a few drawbacks, a few missing features in comparison to the premium lenses, then yes, without a doubt. But if you wanna see my genuine happiness of using this lens, all you need to do is look at my stupid smile on this clip from a very, very long day in London. The whole day has been amazing. The 28 cent five has been amazing. And uh, you can probably tell from the smile on my face, the experience, the enjoyment, it's all been there. Having 75 millimeters is perfectly fine when it comes to doing anything in the city. 20 millimeters has been a bit of a challenge. Sometimes I've had to back up, but that's just personal choice. However, if you've got to this part of the video and you're thinking the 28 75 isn't quite as versatile as you'd like it to be, then watch this video right here because I may have the solution for you. I'll see you next time. Peace.